Welcome back to Factory Sealed. It is November 6th, 2016. My name's Eric Peters, and joining me today, Mr. Tom J. Reagan. Hey guys, how you doing? Oh, great, Tom. That was a great intro there. You really enunciated well on the hey guys. Uh, I was really careful this time. Really let that silent G stay silent. <laughs> We've got Mr. Dan Curtis. Gay guys! <laughs> <laughs> that G was not silent. <laughs> That's the best Hello. Thing <laughs> I have to switch my phone to that. <laughs> and just recording. Imagine being, just imagine you being in a meeting and then just <laughs> you put your phone on silent. Gay <laughs> Sorry, that's uh, that's my wife calling. (laughs) (laughs) And recording this week from hospice care, we have Miss (laughs) Jess Clarkson. I don't. I'm not even going to say anything to that. Thank you very much. I've had that one lined up for a while. (laughs) Coming to you from beyond the grave, (laughs) Miss. One foot in the grave, the other on its way in. Hi, Jess. Hello. She was halfway up the hill, but now she's fucking over it. <laughs> Jess used to be in her 20s. Now she's not. Uh, uh, I still am in my heart. I mean, I'm 12 at heart. That doesn't you're mean like shit. Three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is true. You're giving yourself too much credit. <laughs> You can hold the door. Just you sound like an absolute train wreck today. Um, I sound like Scarlett Johansson. Thank you. Ooh, <laughs> I don't know. I think that's actually exactly who I sound like. I don't know if she's that. If she was dead, <laughs> <laughs> she's that raspy. You're such an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, Dad. <laughs> Why are you in such a state of disarray today? Because when you turn 30, your body falls apart. Oh, oh shit, ain't that the truth? Oh. Yeah, dude, yeah. I'm, impressed, past- I'm impressed, Jesse, you're still here, despite the fact you're nearly dead. But when you're not nearly dead, you're not here. You need to uh, almost die more often. Okay. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Good defense, Jess. Like hey, it. Hey, shut up. <laughs> That's me told. Well, shit, I can't argue with shut up. <laughs> um, okay, but can we talk about start time this morning? Why is it 9.30 in the morning? Uh, because you guys all adhere to some bullshit called daylight savings time, and Arizona doesn't. I think you'll find it's actually half two in the afternoon, though, so no problems there. Uh-huh. Yeah. I don't feel sorry for you having to start at 9. I, I started do. at 7. I know, that's so stupid. And speaking of your body falling apart, I fell asleep on the couch last night. And I feel like garbage. Oh, God. Muffin. The room was spinning last night and I didn't understand what was happening. But you made it here. I made it. My God, I'm I proud feel of like you. doing the podcast with us will not help your situation. Uh, no. Factory Probably Sealed not. has been proven to be a known hangover cure. But at least you're not moving furniture anymore. No. Why does the alcohol abandon your system? Because it's too bloody stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's like, fuck I, this, I'm out of here. So. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping will happen. Jess does have a point, though. When you turn 30, your body just falls apart. Look at what happened to me. I turned 30 last January. 21 days later started breaking shit never broken a bone in my entire life started breaking shit surgeries therapies you haven't broken a bone before then? never other than like fingers and toes but that shit doesn't count i'm afraid it does this what about your hip <laughs> <laughs> i didn't have a broken hip i'm not 90 <laughs> i seriously thought you had a broken hip 
No, I had a, a hip that wasn't formed properly, so they had to fix it because I tore something in it. <laughs> All right, Did they have to break it to fix it? No, <laughs> they went in and they actually removed some bone. So you don't have a hip. <laughs> no, nope, so not at all. I just kind of flop around. To remove it. What? They would have broken that bone to remove it, so you had to broke it. No, bone. no. They took a Dremel and they shaved it down. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've got some weird fetishes, Dan. Damn right. <laughs> mm, surgery oh, videos. God. This really gets me going. <laughs> Ooh, what's on the docket today? Knee replacement? All right. <laughs> what a good time. <laughs> Crystal, I'm going to be late. They're doing a triple bypass. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I've never broke a bone before. So, and I haven't broke any fingers or toes either. Yeah, same here. Touch but wood. I'm only a year away I broke my foot. Your wiener doesn't count, Dan. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I broke that all the time. I just snap right No, up. you said touch wood. Yeah, I got it, thanks. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> you make a penis joke. Ding, 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 ding. Put one on the telly! <laughs> they haven't shown up for a while, those two. I know, Bert and Edna, I'm wondering if they're still alive. At least Jess can keep them company now. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Jess, at we least look. you still got your good looks. I don't think that's actually a true statement this morning, but thank you. Yes, you do look like you've been dragged through six hedges. My mascara is all over my face, and I have candle wax in my hair because I spilled a candle on me last night. How do you spill a candle? <laughs> because it was on the window and I shut the window and then the candle fell on me and it got on what my What kind of kinky sex games ropes. are you into, Jessica? The Wait Raven a minute. Kind. No, I need, to, I need to visualize this. Was this window above you? No, they're like windows that like open like like old school windows. But how did it, it get in your like hair? It hurts, it hurts just because it was today. up high. Like it was on. So you know, like older windows that are like wood and they slide, and then you have to put something there so they don't like. What are they, casement windows? I I don't know. No. Anyway. <sighs> So it was above my head, and I lifted it to turn, to move the window down, and then it fell. But it didn't burn my house down, so I have that going for me. <laughs> Riveting. Hooray! Jeff. You know that uh, um, review we got ages ago where it said that, like the girl sounds like she's nearly asleep? <laughs> <laughs> Shut that up! None of us enjoy what we're talking about, and Jess sounds like she's asleep. Yeah, that was a great review. I think it gave us one star. <laughs> I had dog obedience class with Simon yesterday, and the lady was like, I know you're sick, but can you pretend to be a little bit more enthusiastic? <laughs> Shut up. I still love Stop how your dog's called Simon. Everybody in Canada gives the pets human names. It's true. Well, we're glad you're with us today, Jess. Thank you. In body, but not necessarily in mind. But just because we like hearing you talk so much, we're going to ask you lots of questions. Oh, fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tom and Dan, I have a care package on the way to you. Oh, a care package. Yes. Care package incoming. Hooray! Grenade 2! Doesn't say God Save the Queen on it, like the last one. Did I put that on the last one? Yeah. Oh. I hope you you've included a stupid letter. You, you wrote United Kingdom on the bottom and then put underneath God Save the Queen. <laughs> I did, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I actually have the box all sealed up to send out tomorrow morning because I took it to the post office and they're like, yeah, you can't send it in that box. It's going to cost too much. <laughs> all right. So I had to take it home and repack the entire thing, but I'll get just a plain box, and I will make it as obnoxious as possible. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, Dan, you requested Reese's, but I didn't have any more space in there because it was already too heavy, so you just have to live with what you're getting sent. Oh, God damn it! But you will be happy to know I am sending each of you a piece of durian candy. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, oh God. Oh, the testicle candy. Uh, no, it's poop diaper candy. Oh, yeah, okay, I always get mixed up. 
Why do people? What's this? Dude, the, the testicle candy. You had that when we were down here, didn't you? I did not. I would have remembered. <laughs> yeah, wasn't it like the we went to the Chinese Cultural Center, didn't we? I, no, we never went to there in the end. Oh, we ran out of time, didn't we? No, because they're like these. I, I think I said you guys pictures of it. They're these. Li, I think it's lychee fruit. It oh, look yes. like spiky testicles. Yeah. And, but I have had the Benny Mango lollies. Yes, That's absolutely dreadful. I managed to keep one in my mouth for a minute before. I bought you a different. Classic. I bought you a different Benny candy, thinking it would be really awful because it had a bunch of different flavors in there, like um, <laughs> strawberry, jicama, and chocolate, and uh, watermelon, and just a bunch of random stuff. And I thought they were chili powder covered, and they weren't. So they're actually quite nice. Yeah, until you bite into it and the chili powder falls out of the middle. Oh. <laughs> I did laugh at that video. <laughs> Oh, it was awful. Like, this really isn't that bad. The watermelon part was fantastic. Loved it. Bit into it. Disgusting. So I sent you a few of those. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Woo! I sent some for Crystal, too, Dan. Oh, thanks. In case she would enjoy it. Yeah, I won't tell her what it is. Yeah. Hey, Crystal, here's a piece of caramel from America. No, I would say that's a bit of caramel, but, you know. <laughs> no, no, you got to call it caramel. It's just caramel. <laughs> hmm. There's some wank shaft around the office Is the other day and was giving out chili cho- chili chocolate bits and just said it was normal chocolate and me being a greedy bastard just ate four bits at once <laughs> and it was like eating fire. <laughs> <laughs> what a wanker. I saw somebody online that had put a bowl of uh, red hot peppers out and just put a sign that said Egyptian strawberries. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that would suck. Um, so, yeah, you should have that probably in two weeks. And Ellie put a special treat in there for Cat. Ah, oh, sweet. Yeah. It's a diaper. <laughs> yeah. It's like, hmm, what can a little kid give of Bally? Probably a diaper. <laughs> <laughs> All of her stuffed animals. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So, what else is going on? We've got... Uh, America's about to fall apart. Yes. Yeah. So, Tuesday should be awesome. Yes. Either way. Um, I have a birthday request to America. Mm, what? Hashtag not Trump. The, Just probably kidding, not going to... not going to get political. That's the last thing I'm saying. Hashtag what? Not Hashtag Trump. Oh, I'm man. 30. Hashtag biz. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Jess is dead. <laughs> you sound like Rick Poor. from Rick and Morty. <laughs> Poor Jess. <laughs> Jess. Poor. Jess. Go back. She's going to BRB. Who says BRB? Uh, 30 year olds. <laughs> All right. Duh. Go back in time to the Nokia 3210 days. No. <laughs> so what else is going on, fellas? Anything of note? Um, we're no. still Brexiting. Speaking of the note, there's a news story over here about Samsung having washing machines that like to explode. Tom, your workplace has to just be awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty um, interesting. He has but to. He has to be careful what he says. Two point eight million washing machines have been called, recalled. They're doing well. Yeah. How does like, how does that make it through QA? Let's put clothes in here. Let's turn it on. Like the first question should be: Did it explode? <laughs> yes, yes, it did. Or no. Send it out. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Send this one to the manufacturer. It's probably just some dude there who's like just trolling everybody and putting self destruct mechanisms in things. He just presses a button every so often to make a blow up. <laughs> yeah, the, the news story that came out recently said that Samsung had potentially lost 4.4 4 billion from the Note 7 exploding. Holy shit. Oh, I think it permanently damaged their uh, cell phone reputation. Yeah. Until next year when everybody buys the next one. They've removed themselves entirely from that sort of six inch phone market you know the big phone market entirely you think they're going to come out with a galaxy 8 um 
Yeah, but I don't think I don't think they'll go with the note anymore. I don't think they'll carry on with that range. It'll just change its name to the pad. Yeah, but the yeah the washing machine is another. They're not exploding for. God, it's a bloody nightmare. But the thing with Samsung is they're just so siloed. Like they don't communicate with each other at each line. So that it bottlenecks all the way. Like they don't te- they don't really include everyone properly. It's all very hush hush and stuff. So maybe somebody did say, "Hey guys, this is going to blow up," and they yeah. just didn't get the n- the memo. They're like, "Ship it." I wouldn't be surprised. It's a pretty conservative company. It likes to keep itself away from you know certain areas, certain departments. Keep itself to itself. It's a bit of a weird one. Hmm. But um, yeah. It's absolutely nuts. My next two weeks are going to be super busy. I'm not you got to change all them words from explore to learn more. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Warn all the warn everybody in the world who has a Samsung to not charge it. But at one point they sent out these boxes to people to return their Note Seven. You'd send a box, then a box for the box, and then a box to go <laughs> to put that box into. <laughs> like Boxception. Yeah. So the phone was in a box, that box was in a box, that box was in another box. Yeah, which was in a bag. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> because the box, the the first box, I think, was like, just in case it exploded in transit. <laughs> it was like a special bomb-proof box. <laughs> <laughs> Good lord! And you couldn't return them on the aeroplane. They had to be returned by boat. Which was even more expensive. <laughs> It was the most... Which is being conveniently sunk at sea. (laughs) Honestly, the whole thing is just just crazy. Good lord. Went to see a band last night at the O2 in London. Um, Uh, The Proclaimers? One Direction? Proclaimers. But just some big, some some rock band from Sheffield. And... One um, Direction. Oh, God, what are they called? Eric, there are other artists... (laughs) Uh, I, know you're, I know you're a big, big fan. <laughs> was cool, I'm just thinking of all the British artists. Uh, Elton John. One Direction. <laughs> was it Justin Bieber? Bieber! <laughs> Fuck off! Justin Bieber's Canadian! Yeah, damn right. Avril Lavigny! Yes. Having somebody like that be part of your nation is not a good thing. Justin oh, we adopted is on his way up again! No, he's not. He's a douchebag. Can Justin Bieber not be the American president? No, he could never be because he's not an American-born citizen. Are you sure, you Donald Trump is. He looks more like a, a freak to me. What, Jess? <laughs> don't you not have to be an American-born citizen anymore? Didn't yes, someone you say do. Something? No, you have to be. But dude was born in Canada. One of your dudes. One of our dudes. Well, that was a, that was not proof. If you're born, no, he could be born in Canada, but if his parents are American citizens, he still is granted American citizenship. So you don't have to be born in America. You have to be an, an American born citizen. You cannot be an, a uh, citizen that comes over and gets naturalized. You have to be an American born citizen. If I were, if my parents went to, went to Asia and I was born somewhere over there, I'd still be an American citizen. What about if. Your mom was pregnant when she took you over to America, then had you in America, so you were American-born. Could you then become president? Yes. Technically, yes, because our system is so broken that those people are then granted citizenship, even though the parents weren't citizens. When I have a child, I will make sure it's born in America, just in case they would like to be president. <laughs> or you I can mean, get them born in no man's land, and then they're no one. Oh, and then they have to live in an airport forever. That's how it works. Oh, shit, son. Well, there's worse yeah, places, there's worse places to live, there's toilets, yeah, there's, the there's places to eat. Did you see the Tom Hanks movie, The Terminal? Yeah, it's a good film. What Did is him eat? in plane movies? Uh, I don't know. There's only like two. That uh, and... Castaway? Well, Castaway's not really a plane movie, it's more of an island movie. Uh, snakes on a plane? That wasn't Tom Hanks. Oh, I, thought, I thought you just said plane movies. <laughs> <laughs> airplane, <laughs> airplane two. Connie, stop. Uh, Which is a great film, but that's, that's a lot of plane movies. <laughs> Get off my plane! <laughs> yes, <laughs> I was just about to say that. What a line! Uh, Get off my plane! 
Did yeah. you guys hear that uh, there was a rumor circulating onto some video game stuff? Enough oh of making fun God. of Jesse being old. Did you guys hear there was a rumor circulating that the Wii U was ending its production? I did. And then Nintendo, Nintendo came out and said, no, it isn't. But they said no about all of the NX stuff that ended up being true. How can we trust anyone anymore? I believe the video game <laughs> industry is just built on secrets and lies, isn't it? And they have to say no because otherwise their, their sales are just going to massively drop between now and when the Switch is released. I, I don't think they can drop any lower. Yeah, but they still have to stay on message with, with, with some yeah. kind of product on the shelves. But there's still morons who had the Wii standing in stores nationwide looking at the Wii U going, is it an accessory for the Wii? I'm not sure. Can I put my Wii games in my Wii U? (laughs) Yeah. Yes. You can do anything you want. You're American. Duh. America. America. Land of the free, home of the idiots. (laughs) <laughs> shut, uh, shut up <laughs> Sick comeback bro uh, High five <laughs> the, Speaking of the Wii U There was uh, also I, I thought it was pretty interesting too There was a little snippet From the new Animal Crossing New Leaf update Which apparently when people were Reloading their games after not playing for a while They were deleting their entire towns on accident Because there's a little oh, option that What? Yeah, you can sell oh, your town. No, be help. I can't were doing hear you. On accident. I'm sorry. What? On accident. He yeah, meant he, meant, he meant he meant by just go with it. Of accident. To accident. America. In accident. For accident. <laughs> Through accident. I, I discovered Fine. yesterday while watching Graham Norton our talk show over here that you guys say reprise wrong. What do you mean? You say reprise. No. No, we don't. <laughs> well, um, watch him. Ben Affleck insisted you did. It depends. Well, he's a moron. Oh, he's from Boston. They're messed up. Boston. Yeah. It's Ooh. reprise. Fair enough. I take <laughs> it back then. You I forgot what I was even talking about because Jess threw a monkey wrench into it. We you. We you. Animal. Oh, yeah. In Animal Crossing, there was a. You can buy these. You can buy shit that leads to like consoles and stuff and when you buy one for the Wii U it has a little tagline under it that says great artists aren't always appreciated in their time so Nintendo's <laughs> throwing a little bit of uh, Wii U love in there oh. poking fun at themselves for having a shitty console um, yeah. I think Nintendo you... this year is basically banking on Pokemon as their I, big seller I loved that unofficial yeah. ad for Sun and Moon Oh, the, oh, oh yeah, yeah, that one was touching. It's really cool. It made me cry. I got so made me want to buy Pokemon. Well, there you go. That's yeah. this Friday, isn't it? Well, I think it's out soon, yeah. Are you guys getting it? I'm getting it for the Christmas. No, I don't have a console. Which one are you going to get, Dan? Sun. Ooh, me too. You should get Moon. You should shut up. <laughs> I'm getting it first. <laughs> So therefore, I'm getting Sun, um, and I don't know, you have to get I don't know why, but in the Pokemon generations, I always get the one which is first in the title, now that I think about it. Because you don't have patience. I Correct. If you're a real American, you get the moon. <laughs> exactly, we landed on that shit's America, that's just an extension of America right there. It belongs to you. You get everything. Your flag is up there. You should be uh, it's, not, it's not commonly known, but us Brits landed on the sun, so... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it would be uh, pretty easy to get there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, l- I think America's uh, one of those countries that if somebody else flew up to the moon and just knocked our flag over, we'd fucking just relaunch NASA to get have- back up there and stand it back up. <laughs> <laughs> it might have fell over anyway. It's probably gone. It blew there, away when they took off. Alien, huh? The past an alien came and wiped his ass on it. Yeah. I mean, it's probably not even the old stars and bars anymore because all the radiation bleached it out. Uh, uh, it's in a Hollywood studio. It is. <laughs> yeah. Shot by Stanley Kubrick. Yeah. I, I think they should do a reboot by Michael Bay. 
takes off and the moon explodes. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute. Something tells me that ain't right. <laughs> Lens flares. Oh, man. Good point, Tom. I should get moon. Be more patriotic. <laughs> My condition. So why are you converted with this one, Eric? I don't know. I just figured I should probably see what all the fuss is about. I can't believe it's taken you this long. I had more important games to play when I was a kid. See, Sun and Moon, though, look like kind of... Obviously, it's still Pokemon, but these kind of a big jump compared to other games. Like, in terms of 3D environments and the actual battles as well look a lot more 3D. So they finally changed Did you... engine. Yeah. Okay. Did you play the uh, demo? Uh, no, I haven't. Good lord, is this an official picture? Because if so, how is this marketed to children? <laughs> yes. Oh, God. That can't be official. I mean, it looks... That's a very small bikini. That's a huge belly button. It, it looks like a slash wound. She got stabbed with a sword. If you guys no, see the new Pokemon, not, which looks like Donald Trump. off parts of belly button. The rest are like, like ab line. That is not an ab line. That is a sword wound. Your sword wound. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen, Eric, have you seen the new Pokemon that looks like Donald Trump? No. no. Send it. <laughs> next next president of the United States, Pokemon. <laughs> there you go. Enjoy. Oh, yeah. Young goose. I am a Pokemon. I am the oh best Pokemon. <laughs> I am the best Pokemon of them all. All the other Pokemon are idiots. We're going to win bigly. And he also <laughs> he also needs to do the OK symbol all the time because that's just... You just need to do that all the fucking time because it's just so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> let, uh, let's make America great again, okay? <laughs> is that your Donald Trump? Yeah. I mean, that's shit. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad it's shit. That man does not deserve an impression. Even the evolved version looks like him too. I didn't see the evolved version. I just sent you it. Mm, I wasn't looking at that page. Oh, that's brilliant. Ah! No, he's that's good. awesome. So he's Japan, the hands, but Japan is even laughing at you through Pokemon. That's what's happening right now. Oh yeah. What one so gets the Vulpix? Huh? Huh? There's a Vulpix in this one. Jess, what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, freaking Pokemon Sun and Go. A Pokemon so called Vulpix, Dan. <laughs> I believe it is Sun. The Alola forms? Yeah. Yeah, it's Sun. That's what I'm getting Yeah, at. which is interesting because they've, they've changed the old Pokemon rather than putting loads of new ones. Well, there is new ones, but I don't know if there's as many as usual. And they're redoing the old ones. Which I like. There's, um, there's, a, there's one. I think it's the Meowth alone form, and it just looks completely stoned. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. Meow. <laughs> On catnip. Meowth, that's right. No, I, I don't know. I can't tell you why I want this one. It's just... I'm going to try it. I think you will like it. I played the demo and I really enjoyed it so far. I really like the art style on it. It's that cell shaded style graphics that really draws me oh, in. Cool. I think they've binned off the gym leaders this time around, haven't they as well? Ooh. I think so. There's um each island has kind of a guardian you have to beat. I found it really weird too that they actually don't have this is on the three DS but there's no three D. Because the three DS's three D has died. No. I played through a lot of Link Between Worlds in 3D. I just did when I was do going through like the portal thing because I was like, what? What? I played through most of Majora's Mask in 3D. I never have the 3D on, really? but admittedly I do have the original 3DS where the 3D goes off as soon as you move slightly. Oh no, this the new one is fantastic. You can be quite a ways off and it'll adjust. That's pretty good. Yeah, definitely worth the price of entry. I'm not buying the same console again. For the same reason, I shall not be buying the PS4 Pro. 
Uh, oh, that, when does that come out? There's on the tenth. That's on the tenth. Yep. 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 Are you finally gonna get one, Jess? Yeah, it's I am. It's arriving on Thursday. Hooray! Hooray! Welcome to the generation at last. Yeah. Congratulations. Are you oh, going to get Battlefield and play Battlefield with me? Uh, I don't know. Are you going to be nice to me? <laughs> probably not. Oh, then I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> you should get Red Dead Redemption. Shut year. up. <laughs> no. You'd no. be happy to know in Battlefield, Jess, you can ride horses. No, that doesn't make me happy. You can ride them away from battle. You can save them. <sighs> Except I will ride them and then you'll kill them. I mean, that's a fair point. Probably with a tuck. Oh, yeah. The multiplayer for Battlefield 1 is incredible. You have to get it, Dan. I don't want it. Do I st- Fine. I just don't like Battlefield. Fine. It's then fine. I will play with myself. As usual. <laughs> really? I'm getting, um, <laughs> I'm getting Titanfall 2, though. I've heard good things. Uh, I see. I debated about it, but I went with Battlefield One instead well, because I suck. figured Titanfall Two will be cheap at some point. So will Battlefield One? Yes, but I'll enjoy Battlefield One more. Because there's no doubt there'll be another Battlefield in two years, and next, probably another Titanfall. Next year is apparently um, Battlefront Two is coming out next year. Apparently, yeah. Hopefully, they actually do space battles this time. Hopefully, it actually has a story mode. Hopefully it's better. I've play- I've got that, and I've played it three times. Yeah, I've probably played it less than 15. I, yeah, I, I tried I went tried to go back to it recently, and I just didn't enjoy it very much. I think we got so sucked in by the, this is Battlefront, this is cool, we're in the Star Wars universe, and then we realized there's really not much to this game. Yeah. It's gorgeous, looks great, it's a ton of fun to play, but it's just kind of boring after a while. Well, that that could be the argument with the PS4 Pro and stuff. Like, it enhances the graphics and stuff, but gameplay is key. Without good gameplay, there's no point. Yeah, but if you're a visual snob... Which I'm not. When I get a 4K TV, I will definitely get a PS4 Pro. I'm surprised you don't have one already, to be honest. Well, the TV that I have now is perfectly fine. Well, I have a 4K TV, and I have a PS4 Pro. Oh, well, get you. Like You're only three really years dumb. late. Shut up. So what do you actually use your 4K TV for at the moment? Uh, watching things in 4K. Telling people she has a 4K so TV. What, you watching, what can you watch things in 4K from? Uh, Google Cast's home screen. <laughs> we so don't, nothing. So I don't think we get that. Guys, shall we move on to our game of the week? Yeah, GTA, GTA. It's not GTA, Jess. If you would have been on the show slash listened <laughs> to the show, you'd know that we covered all of GTA. I was on that show. Wasn't that about when we decided ago? at the end of that show that we weren't going to do another show? It was in the calendar. Well, our calendar is just not working. Dan, you picked this week's game. I did. What did we play? Super Metroid. Super. Super Metroid. For the Super Nintendo. Yes. Yes. I'm going to let you helm this discussion because this is your game. Eh. I have to. Oh, yeah. You're taking ownership over this. Uh. Uh, well, uh, Super Metroid is, of course, the sequel to Metroid on the NES. It's actually the third game in the Metroid series. And it's a 2D side-scrolling adventure where you are Samus, and you're going through all the different areas, and you have to unlock upgrades to progress. This is actually one the game that kind of spawned forth the Metroidvania genre. Hence the t- hence like the Guacamelee, t- um, Outland... Uh, what are some of the other more famous ones? Castlevania. Well, you said Ca- Metroidvania <laughs> spawned genre, so obviously Castlevania's in there. Not necessarily. It could be Testiclevania. Or... Oh, dude, I love that game. 
and the Axiom Verge. That's, yep. I actually went back and played that yesterday, but I'll talk about that later. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah, that's Metroid Prime. Super Metroid. I always get them confused because it doesn't have Prime in it. Prime is the newer ones. Is it? The this came out in North America April 18th, 1994. Wow. Is that long ago? Yeah. 22 years. Did you know? Yeah. It was a third Jess, day. we were eight then. I know. That was a good year. <laughs> Perspective sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my god, I didn't get carded at the LCBO at yesterday. The what? I always get carded. Aw. What? What you talking carded, about? Carded, meaning they ask for your ID alcohol. to make sure you're old enough. Oh, god. Yeah, because they card everyone who's who they think is uh, 25 or under. Here they card anyone who looks under 40. Because, well, your drinking age is like 55 right uh 60 actually yeah halfway there there, eric halfway there i know almost get a beer i've just been drinking rubbing alcohol recently Oof, that's strong that stuff yeah hits you like a truck i usually just quaff back some pain stripper (laughs) (laughs) i huff markers toilet duck occasionally (laughs) toilet duck (laughs) god did you say, Dan, that it was the third Metroid game? It is, apparently. I, I, it is. What's the second one? Metroid, Metroid 2. 2. <laughs> the, the NES? Yes. Yeah. I, don't remember the, I don't remember that. That's, uh, that's new, new to me. I'd forgotten about that one, terrible. too. The Return of Samus. Yeah, I totally or is it Samus? <laughs> we'll, we'll never know. Or is it Seamus? Samus, Lucy Boothis. <laughs> Metroid 2 Return of Samus. I think it's uh, <laughs> Seamus. Seamus. Oh, but yes, it's Seamus. <laughs> Eric, now, it wait, was just is... noise. <laughs> the Metroid 2 is a Game Boy only. Oh. oh okay, okay. Um, yeah. Because I've got... I think the original, the first Metroid is on the NES Classic. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So the important question is, how far... Did everyone get? I I didn't get very far down. I'm so sorry. Here's the question, Tom. Did you start? I, I did start. Okay, so that counts. Jess, <laughs> did you start? Yes. How far did you get? Not very far. <laughs> Dan. Hi. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? No, stop. I'm fantastic. No, let's get to the point. <laughs> <laughs> How I didn't get far at all. I mean, I did, but then I didn't. So we've got another Tomb Raider 2 situation going on right here, is what you're saying. You didn't finish either. I got about three quarters of the way through, though. Oh, that is the largest load of British bullshit. I'm going to call up my emulator right now and do a screenshot. <laughs> so fuck you. I got a ways and then died... And went back a ways and said, fuck it. (sighs) Guess what year the original Metroid came out in? Mm, 83. Nope. 86. Yes, the best year! (sighs) I wasn't even alive then. Shut up. (laughs) We (laughs) saw that. Dead then. 86. I was minus one. Old people. Seasoned like a fine steak. Feckin' old. Like, like a fine wine. No, nobody likes wine. Oh, yeah, okay. No. Who drink beer? We like mold wine. Oh, yeah. So, mold uh, wine. Shit colored stars all around this week. Though. Oh, dude, it is just diarrhea city in here. <laughs> <laughs> Great and mighty poo star for everyone. This one Sweet. was just oatmeal fire hose week. Taco Bell. Taco of a Taco Bell so why why did nobody get very far? So hold on, let's be objective about this because we got called out for sharing a similar sentiment on Link, Link to, the past. to the Past. Wait, what was this that you guys did not enjoy this? Well, we we tried to Dan tried to say he didn't care for it, but it came across as it was shite. I didn't say it. I no, didn't I see that. Right now. 
I know, but I, I know, it, but I said we need to be a little bit more delicate about our oh. vocalizations of what we're about to say. I didn't say it was sh- proper shite. It was. I it was just shite. I have a message from shite. you about Link to the Past saying it was shite. I Link to the Past was shite. <laughs> <laughs> Met- uh, Super, Metro- Super Metroid was passable, but I. I played quite a lot of it, and it gets quite frustrating later on. I've I never did. been a Metroid fan. It's never interested me. Why is that? I don't know. I have no idea why, but when I was working at GameStop and the new Metroids are coming out, people were losing their mind. I'm like, that just doesn't look fun to me. Oh, man, Metroid Prime 3 Corruption but on the Wii is Mega excellent. Man. This is not even close to Mega Man. Obviously, they're... But like... Similar in terms of... Uh, 2D. You go from left to right, it's 2D, you shoot things, so pretty much all games from the 8 and 16-bit era. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I was going to say. No. In terms <laughs> of its like, difficulty level and stuff like that. Like I didn't find this difficult, aside from the fact that there's zero indication of what you are doing and where to go. I get that's the appeal of it. But that's the only difficulty of it. I get lost as fuck when I play. Like, so lost. Well, the problem is, a lot of the places you need to go aren't obvious. And you'll have to either bomb a block or something like that. But later on, you get a thing called the X-ray goggles, where you can um, actually see things in the environment that you can bomb. Which is quite useful. But I still got lost when I had that. Well, even right away at the beginning, you walk by these pink doors Mm. all the blue doors you can shoot pink doors you have to have the missiles for so you're walking by all these doors and the the game does a good job of leading you kind of in the direction of where you need to go you get the missiles and you can go back and kind of branch out from there and get another weapon that you'll come across later but like dan was saying when you get the bombs you don't know that you can just put a bomb by a wall and maybe blow up through that wall so you sit and spend so much time just looking for these hidden passages and backtracking over the same stuff that you've done 15 times before. But that's what the appeal is. Yeah, see, like I, put, I put a good four hours in yesterday, and um, I was enjoying it for quite a while, and then I got to a place later on called Meridia, where it's just it's like a, a huge underwater maze, and you can fall out of this area back into another area, and then you have to backtrack round the entire other area to get back to Meridia. And I was like, you know what, I'm done now. <laughs> it was just but saving the save locations are way too few and far between mm. because I'd gotten past a boss. I'd, I'd done a bunch of exploring, gotten past a boss, dropped a little bit further in. I was running low on health. And I was looking at the map for a save point, and the only save point was going all the way back through everything that I had just done. Or I could just continue working myself forward a little bit in hopes of finding one, and then I fell in a pit and died. Ah. Well, you shouldn't have fallen in a pit. That's your own stupidity. (laughs) Shut up. (laughs) Yeah. Respect your elders, Daniel. (laughs) Yeah. Sorry, Ma. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but, like, this one is, uh, like, maps are needed a thousand percent for me, because it's just not going to happen any other way. I bet Aaron Robison would have had a notebook filled with maps. He would have had, like, (laughs) huge binders and binders. Well, you actually, you have the in-game map, which fills in as you go. Or you can find little nodes which fill in the map for you. But even so, because... With this game, obviously, certain routes are locked out until you get certain items. So you'll find a room, and then you'll go, right, can't go this way, I'll try and remember this for later. Then you'll go out and find the item that you need and completely forget where it was. And go around every single area trying to find this one room. Isn't that kind of the nature, though, of these Metroidvania games? Yeah. Like, the exploring is all part of it? Having to yeah. It, it is, but on Axiom Verge, which yeah. is very similar, it's a lot more obvious where you have to go. Okay. But I think that's, again, like the argument between like new games and older games where like part of gameplay was like mapping out a process and like it's not just to sit down and play this and beat it in one shot. Like, yeah. it's something you chip away at like over time, just trying to like 
grind through it and figure out where you are. I did enjoy the exploration aspects to an extent, but it is quite frustrating with all the backtracking. Mm. That's just my issue with it. But I, I did. I wouldn't say I did. I disliked it. It's just, it's frustrating at times. But they talk about how terrible the controls are. (laughs) Oh, uh, if you want to talk about terrible controls, I have to ask: Did anybody get up to the section where you have to do wall jumps? No. Oh my god! I didn't even know you could wall jump. And apparently, you You can can wall jump. Yes, from the start, you could wall jump. But right to, to wall jump, you have to do. You know when she does her somersaults. When you jump, yep. you have to do yeah. that towards the wall. Then, when she hits the wall, you have to press the other direction with jump, and then oh. go towards the other wall. When you hit the other wall, press the other direction and jump. And it's the least intuitive, sudden thing in the world. Well, whose smart idea was it to make jump the A button and shoot the X button? Yeah, it's kind of weird. And then to change the angle of what you're shooting is L and R. I just changed the controls. Well, not all of us were playing on an emulator, Dan. There is in-game control changes. Well, I wanted to play it the way the game was meant to be played <laughs> by the developers. Uh, so, oh you didn't, so you didn't actually look, did you? <laughs> no. <laughs> I pressed start and got right into the game. <laughs> and immediately I did that, I did that as well and then realized the controls were wrong and went back to the options menu and changed them. Hmm. See, that's what mm. options menus are for. If you played games inverted, you would know always check the options menu oh before my God, you start. Dan. Uh, I heard me, 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 me. I'm not going <laughs> to adapt to the times because I like to play games with an inferior control scheme. Yep. <laughs> inverted is so stupid. So has been, yeah. so has been 30, but you two are. Inverted master race. Nah. Respect your elder. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> Yes, Dan. Respect us. Uh, really, no. <laughs> <laughs> Surely somebody does. I don't think so. <laughs> somebody did. What is the Somebody sto- did. What, we were role models once. So, who understands the story of the Metroid series? Because this is the first time I've ever actually sat down to play one. So I don't know what the hell is going on. Aside from the fact that Metroid is not your character. Metroid are the little brain sucker units. Like Zelda. Mm. Wait, the guy in Zelda's not called Zelda. No, I think he's Jethro. Oh, right. No, he's Zelda Link. <laughs> it's hyphenated. Hey, I got in out of time, man. <laughs> Wagwan, my Zelda. <laughs> Navi! <laughs> hey! Hey, listen! Hey, Navi, let go on an adventure. <laughs> now you sound like Mario. <laughs> uh, it's whatever. An Italian Jamaican. It's a me, hey. a Jethro Mario. <laughs> hey, it's a me, a Jethro. Walk go on, my brother. That's a girl at work, by the way, can do the best Yoshi impression in the world. It's... Doesn't you just have to sound like you're taking a high pitched crap? Yeah, but it's fantastic. So, so I was having a conversation with her this week where she was doing Yoshi and I was doing Mario. Sounds a bit of a role, riveting. A bit of role play. Oh, don't tell Crystal. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so who understands the story here, Dan? Do you? Okay. Nope. Killers. I, uh, the only Metroid I've played before is Metroid Prime 3 Corruption on the Wii, and I had no idea what was going on, but it was a good time. Mm. Well, at least that counts. I remember being amazed by that because it was one of the few games that actually made quite good use of the Wii's controls. It was a first-person shooter where you had to use like the Wii remote to pull levers and things like that, and it was pretty good. Different puzzles using the Wii remote as well. So from what I remember, Samus, 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 Samus is a bounty hunter. Correct. She found a Metroid larva. It was the last remaining Metroid. All of them had been obliterated. In this game are we talking about? Well, in the previous games. Yeah, because She had destroyed all the Metroids, yeah. found a Metroid larva, it imprinted upon her. So she decided, you know what? I'm going to take this 
back to Ceres for them to study because apparently they've got power that the scientists could harness. So she left it with them and then went to find another bounty. As soon as she left, she got a distress call saying, hey, shit's gone south here. So she went back, found the scientists dead, and the Metroid larva gone. It had been stolen by some person named Ridley. No, Ridley is the big thing that attacks you at the start. Are you sure? I think it was stolen by Ridley. Ridley's the leader of the space pirates. Uh Uh-huh, but it's also that thing that attacks you. Okay, so we're correct. Ridley stole... It's not a person, it's a thing then, huh? Yes, uh, that was my point. (laughs) I wasn't listening. I know. So, Samus escapes from the colony from Ceres and follows Ridley to Zebus, right? Ceres and Zebus? Zebus? Zebes? The Ebgebes? Herpes. The Ebgebes. Herpes? <laughs> and then you just have to hunt for this Metroid larva in all of these random backtracking caves. That's the story. Right? Basically. Got it. I think so. Not very riveting. No, not really. It's, just... it's no Final Fantasy. Well, unless you had a NES, a game How boy, is that not a... riveting? You're a fucking space assassin trying to track down a fucking space pirate. With a space larva. All of those words are cool. <laughs> okay, Jess. As long as there's cool words, it must be cool. No, it is a very engaging story. Jazzercise is a cool word. No, it's not. Jumping Nothing jacks. Nothing about that word is cool. Nothing about vocal jazz is cool either. Jazz hands. Sequin vests. Hmm. Show choir. That's where I was going with that. So what I find, yeah, what I I find interest about Metroid, though, is um, nobody knew that Samus was a woman in the first game until one of the secret endings. Just the regular ending. I thought it was a secret ending. No, it was a regular ending. You can definitely tell in Super Metroid that Samus is a girl. They made her very feminine. And when she dies, her shell busts off of her and she's half naked like Sandra Bullock in Gravity. Yes. <laughs> zero, suit, f- zero suit Samus, in other words. Samus. <laughs> I wonder how many people were going to get to switch to say Samus. <laughs> oh, my God. One more thing we're ruining for you. Yeah. But the guy teaching his partner English. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Through our show. The one thing that I did really enjoy about this game is the music. Yeah, that's good music. Yeah, Very sound effects. I like the sound effects a lot. I like the level good. design as well. I thought it was a pretty good, damn good-looking game for its time. It wasn't very hard, though. Like, I didn't really find many of the enemies very difficult. The bosses in particular do a fin- fantastic job of just pouring health into you. If you can just stay alive long <laughs> enough to shoot something that the boss kicks out, you're going to get health. Mm, in theory, but some of them, you have to... Which bosses did you fight? Like the first oh. three? Did you fight the one that looks like a Marlboro of Final Fantasy? Yeah, that one was not hard at all. It just shot out these little uh, pollen spores, and you just shoot those, and you get missiles and health galore. Did you get All you do is you stay low, crouch, and when he opens up, you jump up and shoot him. It was not difficult. But you had to use the missiles, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. I think you could use the charge shot. Uh, the, only, the part of that, that fight that got difficult was uh, when he started bouncing around faster. That was it. Yeah, The switching between the missiles and the beam attacks is what threw me a bit. Because I didn't actually get the charge shot until later on. I completely forgot. Ooh. Well, I didn't know it was there, actually. And then I looked at a guide and it said, you should have a charge shot by now. I was like... I don't know. All the guides for this game are so badly written. Oh, the guides weren't helpful at all. Not at all. I had to use a, um, a YouTube video instead. Oh, Lord. But that was also pretty tough because I had to just keep pausing it being like, wait, how did you jump on those walls <laughs> <laughs> there is another section where you um you fall down a giant pit and there's a weird ostrich like creature down there which um did any uh, did anybody get the uh speed running upgrade or you can just hold down 
be and run. You no, know, but you get an upgrade where you can smash through blocks doing it as well. Oh, nope. Uh, yeah, when you get that, and you go down the bottom of this pit, and then there's this ostrich thing, and it runs past you, and then you can follow it along, and it kind of glows on the ground, and then does like rockets upwards back up the pit. And then I was like, "Wait, what's happening here?" And it turns out if you use the boost move, and then press down when you get to the end, you can do a super jump up to the top of the pit. And, That's so fun. And I was like, "I was just, I just don't know how you meant to know that." Without looking it up. Because the ostrich told you. He didn't tell me how to do it, though. The ostrich. Telepathically, he tried to. Well, he didn't do a fucking good job, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking through a lot of the different bosses here, and the design on these bosses is awesome. Oh, like, yeah, uh, the boss design's really cool. This one? The spore spawn is, is really cool, but I'm looking more at, like, Crocomeyer. Crocomeyer was a pain in the ass. Um, Dragon looks awesome. Crocomire, you have to um, you have to knock him backwards into a pit because he's trying to push you towards a spiked wall at the same time, and you have to either shoot him in the mouth with a charge shot or with missiles. And he then every time you shoot him, he steps backwards, eventually falls in a pit, and then he um, falls in it, and it all burns it burns off his skin. And then you go back to the left and go past the spiked wall, and he comes back as a skeleton, and then just kind of goes to attack you, and then falls down and just destroys. It was really cool. Really liked that boss. I wanted to get farther in it. I just... The, I don't know. How many bosses did you beat, Eric? Uh, four. Okay. So did you, I be, think four. did you beat the one where it um, starts off in the ground and then goes up? Mm, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, basically, it's like a big face thing. You have to shoot missiles in its mouth, and then about halfway That's... through the fight, it goes up, and then is that Fantoon? Uh, no, Fantoon's later on in the wrecked ship. Craid, uh, maybe Craid. I think I fought Craid. I was playing pretty late. I don't remember. I think it's Craid. Did anybody maybe. find the room where it had a statue with all the different bosses? No. It's like a big golden statue, and every time you beat a boss. Uh, bits of it fall off, which makes me think that that is a route later on. Oh, that's cool. Ooh. It's like the final countdown. Yeah, but <laughs> I can't remember where it was, and I refound it again because I was in the room, and then I hadn't beat any of the bosses, and so the statue was intact. Then I beat a couple of the bosses, and then I noticed that the the statue is actually of the bosses. I was like, ah, oh, that's interesting. So, oh, shit, shit, son. Yeah, so. Yeah. I'm disappointed in your efforts for this week, everyone. Oh, get over yourself. You know the it's a um, Tomb Raider two situation all over again. You know the extra lives thing where people uh yeah. play games for ages and raise money and stuff? Watch somebody do a speed run of this game. And it was oh, really? very impressive. <laughs> speed like... running is impressive in general, I find. I I don't yeah. know how people have the patience to get that good at a game. I I noticed when he was running as Samus, he was using the uh, L and R buttons when you um, while running, and it kind of made made Samus run that little bit faster. Really? Hmm. Just know. raise the gun up and down, or what? Exactly. Yeah, like it because I think when you raise the arm, I don't know if maybe it bases your next movement on the pixel that's furthest away or something. So like, I don't know. It's kind of strange, but. Speedrunning is really impressive, regardless of the game. But I just thought I'd watch this one for the sake of us doing th this week. So the only time I would ever watch the uh, speedruns is when they did the awesome games done quick. Because I okay, yeah. they do a summer and then like a winter and a fall, or they do a bunch of, throughout the year. But it's just weird to see some of the games that people choose to speedrun. Like I'm gonna yeah. speedrun Marble Madness. <laughs> But there's such a, a different, such a community around speedrun because there's all the different ways you can do it. You can do it with cheating. You can do it with um, like glitches or without glitches, without cheats. You have to do it 100% normal, and then people exploit known things in the games to get through it. Like yeah. like that Samoose thing with the gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some people um, do the little glitches, which might save them eight or nine seconds and then everyone in the background is just like cheering 
because he managed to pull the glitch off. And it's like crazy appreciation for managing to uh, um, break the game in different ways. You seen the one on Zelda where you can um, Ocarina of Time where you can do a weird thing where he jumps backwards and he like glitches through the air. Oh, that might be Mario sixty four actually. Oh, I'm not seen that. It's amazing what people are still pulling apart out of Mario sixty four. Recently, there was another coin that was discovered that they say is unobtainable because of the way that it spawns in. Um, the they kind of put it into a line of three or four coins, but then apparently afterwards the developers had readjusted the, the, the terrain. So that coin spawns in, but it's most of the way through the floor and then immediately disappears because of that. Oh, well, there's all kinds of cut content in games. It's really interesting. There's an entire website. It's called the cutting room floor where um, it outlines like can things that were taken out of games yeah. before they're released. Or even um, the game, Oh, what's it called? Advent- Adventure for the Atari 2600. Yeah. And that was um, sort of known to be the first game where the programmer had actually built in a secret room where you could see his name because Atari at, at that point didn't credit their developers. So he hid his name. Oh, in yeah. Game. I remember that. Yeah, which is really cool. But, uh, huh. the, fa- the Final Fantasy games tend to have a lot of hidden things. Yeah. Is that really hidden, though, or is that just extra stuff? I know it's stuff that was in development and never got taken out of the game, so it still exists within the game to an extent. But you can't actually use it. Weird. Like on um, Final Fantasy VIII, there is um, Selfie's Limit Break, where you have the different spells. There was two extra spells which weren't, weren't used. Can you get them, though? You can't get them. Oh. Without without a game shark. But if you get the if you use the game shark, you can actually use them. Yes, you can. Interesting. There's nice. two spells called. There's one called percent, which drops the HP of all enemies to critical levels, and one called catastrophe, which deals heavy non-elemental damage to all enemies. It's interesting how many games you can tear apart the code and find assets for things that were supposed to be in there but were taken out. Like Vice City mm-hmm. was supposed to have a grenade launcher in it. The the code for it was still there. The assets were still there. They just didn't code it into the game. Mm. Nice. There's, um, so, there's a, all go kinds ahead. in Final Fantasy. Yeah, there's a uh, like you know the bit when you're in Laguna's Dream when you're in Wind Hill. Yeah. And you can um, find like a car in the garage, and then there's a scene with an animated background where you're in the, the car, car in the what? In a gar- <laughs> in the garage. I do okay. apologize. Sorry, I I didn't understood what you said. Garrett I'm sorry, so I shouldn't crazy. have been so vague. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got quite loud there. At least I understood that. Yeah, freck off. <laughs> got your groceries in your boot in the garage. Yes. What do you guys call what you put your groceries in, like a shopping cart? A trolley. <laughs> trolley. <laughs> trolley. So stupid. <laughs> Why is that stupid? It's a shopping cart. It's a cart that you go shopping with. It's also a trolley. What else do you call it? It's a trolley. Eric. A cart? That's it? You just say cart? Yeah. What do you... Some people say... I say buggy. <laughs> a buggy. Now that's that dumb. Buggy. That's, that's dumb. super dumb. Like, that's something you go beach dune riding in. Most of the trolleys in my local area just end up in the river, though, so... <laughs> <laughs> so it's a common pastime in Pete Lee to steal a trolley from Asda and just go nuts with it. <laughs> push it into the it. yeah, push it in the river. <laughs> so consensus on Super Metroid. Hashtag loved it. Hashtag blessed. <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> shut the fuck up. I've been listening to the stupid, the twenty four carat whatever Bruno Mars song, and now everything is hashtag. Nobody voice. knows what you're talking about. Yes, you guys do. No, we don't. Just we don't listen to Bruno just Mars. Just send it into nonsense right now. Everyone listens to Bruno Mars. Nobody likes Bruno Mars. 
Everyone likes Bruno Mars. I don't. I don't who's, I don't. Bruno, who's Bruno Mars? Yes, you do in your heart. You just don't know it yet. <laughs> I think people like Bruno Mars only because other people like Bruno Mars. Uh, I think, it's, shut up. It's, uh, <laughs> well, can't argue with that. Is it related to Ethan Mars from Heavy Rain? Yes. No. They're sisters. <laughs> Does he wander around going, Jason! <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, Jason Derulo. They're friends. Uh, uh, I love Jason Derulo. Oh, fuck off, Jess. Why? Can I ruin them um, want to want me for you? Yes. Do uh, it. Yes. Uh, my dad My dad pointed this out to me at the start of the song. He says he's got the sheets on the floor, but he says it in, he says it in, in a very, very high-pitched voice, so it sounds like he's got the shits on the floor. <laughs> I got the sheets on the floor. <laughs> One of my uh, one I of my hate buddies. that song so much. One of my buddies is a huge Radiohead fan, and there's a, a a song that starts off "Jackknife Juggernaut," but it sounds like he says "Check my vagina." <laughs> oh, I love misheard lyrics. Oh God! And ever since I told him, it's like every time I hear that song, I think "Check my vagina." Nice. I thought that the My Inner Ninja song was Miami Ninja. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I guess that's interesting. Like, I thought for years on Thriller he said Dilla, so. You know. <laughs> <laughs> How stupid were you? <laughs> I still, I still don't Dilla. think it sounds like he says Thriller. Radioactive, I thought it was ready to rock you. The uh, For years in the Michael Jackson song where he says, the, the child is not my son, I always thought he said the Chad. <laughs> I thought it was kid is not my oh, son. I thought he said Jed is not my son. Yeah, the Chad is not my son. Yeah, I thought it was Jed. <laughs> Who would want the Chad to be anyone's son? Yeah, <laughs> it's the Chad. It's the Chad. <laughs> That's like a sexually transmitted disease. Yeah, I got the Chad. <laughs> what is the? What it, film is it where the guy's called Chad and he always says it's the Chad? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Can you say that again? Because you were so American. It was so good. Chad. <laughs> uh, was that Freddy Chad. Got Fingered? <laughs> no, I don't know. The Tom Green film? I yeah. don't know what it is. That's such a weird film. There was a there was a episode. I'm just Googling it here. There's a Bachelorette with the Chad. Oh. I think it's Charlie's Angels. <laughs> It is Charlie's Angels. I was just looking at the picture of Tom Green. I'm like, ah, Freddie got fingered. But you know, you're right. It is Charlie's Angels. And he goes, it's, she says something. It's the chat. <laughs> what the hell go, happened to ask, Tom Green? Ask her later and he goes, what's it, the chat? He goes, it's, a, it's always the chat. And he goes, it's the chat. <laughs> yeah. You remember the dumbest shit. I do. I remember nothing of importance, but I remember stupid things from films from years ago. Do you remember the importance of 1776? Uh, is that when you were born? Uh, that's America's birthday, bitch. And that's when we broke away from you guys. Get some, get wrecked. Well done. So proud of you. Yeah. Uh, can we not be proud of the Canadian? I'm for quite doing glad that, that we're not. Atta- that I'm glad that we're not affiliated ass. with you now. To be quite honest, given how things are going. Uh, my take on Metroid is I wanted to like it, but didn't. I think, um, you guys are going to get hate mail again. I had a love-hate relationship with it. I had a good, I had a good time with it overall, just frustrated with the backtracking. The, uh, couple of hours I spent with it, really enjoyed it. Good effort, Tom. Wait. Pretty game. So Tom and I always have shit on lock, like, mm. we actually have good taste. Yeah, you always finish the games. That is always, Obviously. yeah, almost always. I'm not saying I didn't hate. I'm not saying I hated it. It's just it's. I've never had an interest in Metroid, and this didn't change me to wanting to go play through all of them. Like it's that's just okay. never been a series that's interested me. I'm not saying it's a terrible series. I just didn't enjoy it. That's okay. You're you're allowed. Am I allowed to have an opinion? Because yes. according to the internet, I'm not. You're not. Well, that's no, the, you're allowed to. You're just wrong. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm allowed to have an opinion as long as it's the same as everybody else. Yes. No, as long as it's the same as Tom and mine. Yeah, just your peers, right? Yeah, come on. Get well, Dan's together. the other half of that. So what if Dan and I side up? I'm not, we have sorry, a- I'm not siding with you. Man, wrong. Wrong. <laughs> what if we have a stare down? 
<laughs> double wrong. Oh, it's, uh, yeah, no. Stick, stick with, stick with us. I think Dan we told me you. that this game was shite. <sighs> no, I believe he did too. I reacted. I, I reacted angrily after getting lost for an hour. Well, it still counts. We have it in writing. I'm going to search WhatsApp for shite. That's going to be the image for this week's episode. Yep, here we go. I declare it shite. <laughs> here we go. Right. Fuck Metroid doing my head in. I responded, I quit. It's not fun. Dan goes, I declare it shite. Yes. There you have it. Thanks. In writing. Daniel Curtis. I threw myself under the bus while dragging you with me. Yes, but then I played it for longer and I've changed my opinion. Nope. Can't. Once it's written... It is forever your opinion. Oh, sod off. Don't you know anything about how the world works nowadays? You can't change your opinion. Once you yeah. say something, that's your, that, that is your stance for life. I think you're being a little dramatic, Eric. I love drama. <laughs> should be on the hills. I should. Not thing anymore. Desperate housewives? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Any final thoughts on Metroid? Are there any neat facts that we should know uh, Samus is a woman Samus that's so old news Jess this is a podcast about old things uh, <laughs> stop I'm going to cough and it's going to be so loud I can mute my mic oh my god oh that works on another level doesn't it because you're old <laughs> Ooh, get them <laughs> I was reading a little bit about the development process and the morph ball was developed because they were struggling to come up with a crawling animation. I, I gotta say oh. the morph ball's gotta be damn painful. <laughs> oh yeah. Well she's she's yeah, she's not a robot. She, maybe, maybe she's maybe a Maybe she's like that guy with no shoulder blades. <gasps> Stop being rude. How is that rude? Because he doesn't have shoulder blades. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, the, Varia, the, the Varia suit is a mistranslation of Barrier suit. Well, they were oh. sort of close. <laughs> Not really. Uh, Metroid is a portmanteau of Metroid and, or Metro and Android. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so this was the largest Super Nintendo game at the time. How many megabytes do you think it was? Um, three. Go with... Everyone has a guess, so don't say the answer yet. Twenty-eight. Thirty-two. Dan cheated because it's three. I didn't cheat. Daniel I looked, I, Curtis. I knew this already because I saw it the other day. <laughs> so you cheated. I didn't cheat. I knew. How is knowing something cheating? Because <laughs> you're not supposed to know. Oh, I'm sorry for having knowledge. Three for megabytes. doing my research on a podcast about retro games. Mm. Samus's bodysuit was a function of American censorship. So apparently in Super Metroid, in the Japanese version, she was straight up nude when her suit exploded. Oh, but Americans can't censorship. handle that. No, that's true. They can't. They so just they about ripped their cocks off. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Any other fun tidbit facts about Metroid? Well, I, I played it. No. I had to emulate it. I had no other way of playing. And um, when I was playing, there was German translations under everything. <laughs> Ooh. Massive white capital... Text of, just uh, angry words. Yeah, just looking, looking. Yeah, really long, angry-looking words. Very menacing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Apparently, uh, Samus was based loosely off of Kim Bassinger. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. they need to do a film with her, in, don't they? Kim Basinger. <laughs> Basinger. Oh my God! Stop. <laughs> she was in Batman. <laughs> You don't like my pronunciations, Jess? I can't deal with your face. You don't have to see my face. Can't deal with anything. Mm. Apparently a lot of the audio was sampled directly from Godzilla movies for the bosses. Wow. That's, uh... Lazy. Wait, how many Godzilla movies were there? 
I don't know. Isn't there like a million in Japan? Oh. Because they've got Godzilla with all the different monsters as well. Oh, yeah. Or like... Uh, like in know, that it, shit film with Brian Cranston that came out recently. Trumbo. Yeah. That's that. Uh, I put out a question asking people on Facebook why they liked Super Metroid. My good friend Scott Girardi uh, channeled his inner Dan and said it was good. <laughs> he was listening to old shows and was commenting to me about your profound thoughts on games back then, Dan. <laughs> it was good. It was good. Uh, Sean, or Shannon McIntosh never liked the original but fell in love with this one. Good graphics, great music, and sound effects. All of which I can't argue with. It did look good. Yeah. yeah it did. The, the, the it monsters wrong. were quite good looking. The yeah, best. Such a good looking monster. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt. Boy, you, you scrub up nice there, Dragon Boy. <laughs> How about we go out back? <laughs> I love American talk. Play a little hanky panky. <laughs> Who just liked all of this? Way to go, Jess. You just went through and liked right. everything. <laughs> Matt Ernie, I'm the atmosphere the game provided, kick-ass soundtrack, and the boss design was amazing back then. Yeah, I can't argue with that. I'm interested Andrew. what people actually think about the backtracking and stuff, though. I think you're just being dramatic. Because there's no fast. Yeah, Dan, how dare you have an opinion? Yeah. Shut up, oldie. <laughs> Uh, Andrew Back Thorson. in my day, we used to have to walk from one side of the map to the other. <laughs> Up hills both way we did in a hurricane. No fast travel. And the aliens respond. Yeah. And we only had three guys. Goddamn newfangled fast travel. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Thorson writes the ambiance, the feeling of loneliness ambience. on a planet where no other human life form is in existence. Puts this together with great music and great character design, you've got yourself a great game. Guess the other thing that I liked about this game that is really taken for granted is the non-linear gameplay. So here you go, Dan. He's addressing your concern. All of the more oh, yeah. modern 2D Metro games basically hold your hand while you play. This one tosses you into a huge world and says, figure it out. Bitch. There you go. Be hotch. I like that explanation. I can buy the backtracking now. Yeah, fair enough. My God, we changed our minds? You Not can definitely change an opinion. I don't agree with what you said earlier. I was being facetious, Tom. I don't think you were being facetious. I think you were being downright rude. I was being right? American. <laughs> You're being a wanker, really, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> a jerker. Yes. Jess, speaking of which, do you have a new stalker yet? Um, well, creepy divorce guy. Boyfriend, not boyfriend? No, creepy divorce guy. Who's Didn't creepy? Tell you about creepy divorce guy? He lives like across the street and oh. then he wanted to watch movies. CDG. Said, How's boyfriend, not boyfriend? Too? I don't kiss and tell. <laughs> Have you received yeah, any more colossal dick pics? <laughs> no. No. Did you? Not yet. Bit but you do you own. did openly give your Snapchat to the entire audience, so Yeah, so we could have factory sealed snap parties. How many people and did you get one? that actually added you from that? Like two. And we snap all the time. That's not a thing. It's not a thing to say that or it's not a thing to snap all the time. Like just we snap all the time. Like I don't think that's a thing. She is down with the kids. Even though she she is jiggy with it. A young 30. (laughs) Or a really old 29. YOLO! (laughs) (laughs) I can't tell their face either. (sighs) YOLO. YOLO. Don't think we have any emails this week. Disappointingly. But are, you sure, are you sure if you actually opened it? I just looked. Okay. But guess what? It is time to choose a winner of the Nintendo contest. Oh my god! Yeah, Did that sound like it's a Get it! Get it! Struggle it. Can 
we do the drum roll? Put it between your legs! <laughs> what? Huh? What? Put it what? between your legs. Huh? What? Hey. No. God. That's how you judge the quality of something, Jess. You put it between your legs. <laughs> True. Jess, no, that was Jess curly lions. I'm going to need to take this one to the fitting room. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> who won? Who won? Let's go to that part. So, before we get to that, we had quite a good turnout for this contest. Are you happy now? I'm very happy. I was kind of nervous because we weren't getting too many entries. We uh, we we've had, had a surge in the last few days of people yeah. last minute. So in case you have no idea what we're talking about, we <laughs> told people to straddle things, inanimate or otherwise, preferably national monuments, to get extra entries to win the mini NES. And we started out getting a, a, a few entries here and there. Um, you know, Scott posted one of his his son riding a uh, riding oh, a me. horse. Hold on, I just got a somebody just logged into my Dropbox from a different account. Who the hell is this? <gasps> oh, it was me. <laughs> You're such an idiot. No, that that didn't happen. Why? Well, it sent me an email that I, th- I thought it said Windows Phone, but it said Windows 10. <laughs> oh my god, no. Who's You're these? giving 30 a bad name. Oh, Jess, when you get old, it all just starts to go downhill. <laughs> Who the it. hell is this? Oh, it's me. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no. Back to straddling things. Eric, could you explain the contest in that voice again? <laughs> I don't remember that voice. <laughs> no, I, nothing can top that. Yeah, I mean, that was a one and done. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, brilliant. I still find that hilarious. Yeah, Scott posted a picture of his son there. riding a horse with his hat in the air. Good. <laughs> uh, Jack Grant posted a video, very embarrassing video, of him falling off of a riding bull the second it turned on. <laughs> <laughs> but he did fortunately redeem himself straddling uh, University of York. But then things started to pick up with Quentin Seeger, with the, one of those gigantic Costco bears, bent over a balcony rail, just riding the hell out of it. The stuffing out of it. Oh, yeah, just stuffing it. <laughs> he's got such a stern look on his face, too. Like, yeah, you're going to take this. And he's holding the, the bear's ear, too. <laughs> It's damn impressive. I mean, that, ooh. But then, but then Chad Hager really stepped it up. <laughs> it's hilarious. I'm just laughing at it now. Chad, so Chad has a PlayChoice 10 arcade cabinet and found a way to straddle his arcade cabinet barefoot. <laughs> the, hand, the hand in the air, <laughs> the, vacant, the vacant stare and everything. It's just so, so good. I saw that one pop through and just lost it. <laughs> it's amazing. Apparently he had a gun on it, too, that he was hoping to have up, but the cord wasn't long enough. Oh, damn. damn. I mean, that's brilliant. That is just... Yeah. I can imagine him trying to figure out... I, I don't know if he if he's married or not, but we'll assume that he is. He's like, honey, I gotta try to win this. What should I, what should I straddle? And his wife is like, I don't know. How about the arcade cabinet? And they just kind of look at each other like, I think I can fit. I think I can do it. Let's do oh this. I can do this. Help me up. Here's my phone. <laughs> take this. Take this. I'm going <laughs> to... Just imagine that two seconds after this picture, he's on the floor with the arcade cabinet on top of him. <laughs> that one's brilliant. I like that one. Uh, then we got... Hold on. There's another one that came through. Where Sean is that Macintosh. One? Yes. I can't deal with There this is so easy. much going on there. It's quite spectacular. He's got a copy of Harvest Moon in his hand, wearing a Nintendo 64 t-shirt, straddling somebody wearing a horse head, so therefore it counts as an animal straddle, with the factory-sealed Relives Mega Man X video in the background. I mean, there's a lot going on there. 
There's a snake as well, I think. And a cat that's probably that really pissed Bowser off about the horse. The There's a Bowser on the floor. There's a Fallout bobblehead on the desk. A bunch of amiibos. I see Yoshi. I don't see any it's consoles. A creature. It's a fantastic effort. I mean, really? there's a lot going on there. Did we talk about the N64 shirt? Yeah. 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 It's beautiful. Bravo. And Sean actually put socks on. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's extra points or less points. You need to make up the rules properly, man. I, fuck, I just wing it as I go. Clearly. Clearly. <laughs> so... That was the contest. All you had to do is like it or retweet it to get an entry. If you were a Patreon supporter, you got extra, extra entries. There were ways to just infinitely increase your chances to win this. Yes. And now that the contest is over, Thomas, did you oh. put this into your fancy dancy algorithm? I did. Mm, quite. Did it spit out a winner? It did, yes. I mm. threw hundreds of names into the virtual hat. After hours of calculating, mm-hmm. we have a winner. Mm. Yep, 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 yep. The winner is so exciting. It is Quinton Seeger. Woo! Oh, Mr. Bear Humper! Oh, oh shit! Oh, you got that very good. <laughs> See, told you. All you had to do is straddle a picture, straddle something, send us a picture, and you have more <laughs> chances. And the animal. Well, is this rigged? It is not. In no. any way, shape, or form. Wow. Why would we rig something? Because we're evil. Hey, we're good people. Yeah. We're not Voldemort Towers. Oh. Voldemort Towers. Oh, God. Suck so, so Quentin, you need to... Off. You need to contact us via email with your shipping address. And we will get this sent to you as soon as we get our hot little hands on one, which should be this week. And I hope you have your TV close to your settee. Oh, my God. Yeah. Two and a half foot controller cord. What's that all about? <laughs> Damn it. I'm going to have to drag the beanbag next to the TV. How long were the cords on the original NES? One foot. Five feet. Like three times the length, I think. Uh, 91.5 inches. Um, I don't work in inches. <laughs> A lot of centimeters. <laughs> Many meters. <laughs> <laughs> Many. Uh, yes. Yeah. So, the other thing that we need to chat about, uh, Long lost Factory Sealed member Aaron Robison posted something on the page yesterday. I'm going to pull it up here. Um, for those of you who don't know, he was one of the original people that started this with uh, me and Jess. Um, he. I got to. Jesus, I'm having trouble here. Where did he post it? On Facebook. Well, I understand. On the Facebook group. I understand that. Would I'm you just like looking me to read it. it out for you? Yeah, Dan, go ahead and read it because I'm having trouble finding it. Aaron says, "Hello, Factory Sealed at Quilted Tunic here. I know it's been a long time since you've heard from me and my dogs. I just want to make a request to everyone. I recently lost my grandmother, the woman who introduced me to the joys of RPGs like Final Fantasy and the like. Awesome grandmother, by the way." You may remember me talking about her in the early episodes. I have fond memories of playing video games with her for hours. We even had a race to see who could be Final Fantasy VII first, and she won. Good lord. With that in mind, I wanted to ask you to please pick up and play that game you used to, or still do play, that may also bring fond memories of your grandparents or other close family, and help me honour and celebrate those cherished memories. Thank you, Aaron. Hmm. First of all, Sorry to hear about your grandma, Aaron. Yes. I know, it's yes. so sad. I remember him talking about her a lot in the early episodes. That's we sad. talked a lot about grandma. What is it about grandmas that just feed into the things that their grandkids like? Like, yeah, I know your parents don't probably don't want you to play this, but here you go, I'm just going to give it to you anyway. My grandma uh, did no, that. Because at that point, they don't give a shit anymore. <laughs> They've been through the parenting thing, and now they want to be naughty parents. <laughs> 
Yeah, like oh, these aren't my kids. I'm gonna mess them up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, my grandma was the exact same way. She she's pretty much responsible for the fact that I s- ever got into video games as much as I did because my parents couldn't afford to buy games. Yeah. There's, there's... My grandma was more strict with us than she was with my parents. <laughs> Ooh. My gran didn't really encourage me to play games, but she bought them for me. Yeah, same. I'm the same as you, Dan. She yeah, my grandma cool. never actually sat down and played them with me, but she always bought them. I actually yeah, have to. She... My dad is the one I have to credit with getting me into games because he used to have the Mega Drive back in the day, and I used used to play it with him when I was younger. And then he got the PlayStation kind of for himself, and he got. This is one of the main reasons I love Final Fantasy VII so much because he got Final Fantasy VII for himself, and I sat down and played it by myself, and that started off my love for RPGs right there. Just because. I had the I had a lot of the same issue, a lot of the same memories with my dad too because we used to play Mutant League football all the time, and those are some of my favorite memories with him is because he and I had very similar sense of humor in that we found it hilarious with. Uh, how the the enemies or the, how the characters would explode. So the whole game we'd spend just trying to blow each other up, and and uh, we got Golden Eye, and I'd come home from school, and he'd be downstairs playing Golden Eye. Like, Dad, I want to play. He's like, No, I'm playing. And then we just sit down and play together. <laughs> I have very fond memories of my dad playing Echo the Dolphin as well, because I used to be terrified of it. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, I used to hide did your dad games. understand that game more than we did? Probably. I think um, the memories I have are uh, we had Tetris on the PC and it was all about trying to get the highest score and I sort of played that with my dad quite a lot. (gasps) My grandpa, Um, my grandparents used to rent a Super Nintendo a couple times a month back when you could rent consoles and we'd get together as a family and play Tetris and my grandpa was this... um, high school history teacher very analytical and he would he was just the king of tetris nobody could beat him nice so they would just was... rent a super nintendo i'm like grandma why don't you guys just buy one well we'll just rent it it's fine I'm like you're spending more renting the console than if you just bought one and played it all the time <laughs> yeah right i didn't think you could but just like family consoles, memories like that we would just all be packed into their living room the whole family playing Tetris, trying to beat Grandpa. I can't remember a time you could rent a console. No, I don't think you could ever rent them here. Not they came knowledge. in those big yeah. foam padded cases. We used to be able to rent N64s, GameCubes. Yep. Really? It went up to GameCube and that was it. We had Blockbuster you could rent them from, but we had another local company called Wet Steins. That sounds so uh-huh. wrong. Wet Steins? Yeah, I used to work for yeah. Wetsteins too, delivering refrigerators and stoves and appliances. Modern ma'am, I'm from Wetsteins. Mm. Um, <laughs> I'm here to, I'm here to fix your plumbing. No, <laughs> see, whenever I play Streets of Rage, it reminds me of playing two player with my dad on the Mega Drive after school. That reminds that reminds me greatly of playing with my friend from um, when we were kids. Actually, we used to I used to always go around mm. his and play through Streets of Rage too. Mm. And. Uh, Fatal Fury for the Mega Drive as well, which is a just a random fighting game. I think but, it's important to note, though, too, that, that well, we have memories of playing games with our parents way back then. Now, I still, like, now, knowing I have those memories, go forward thinking I'm making new memories with other family members playing games. Like, my mom is a huge fan of the Uncharted games. And, she, like, she's the one that introduced them to me. I flew out to California to visit her one summer, and she had a PS3, and she's like, have you played this Uncharted game yet? She just went out and bought it on her own. And she's like, you have to sit down and play this. It's the best game. She'd already beaten it twice. And, you know, we sat down when I was on vacation and just played through it together. And ever since then, as each new one comes out, I'll buy it and play it and then loan it to her and she'll buy it and play it. Or we'll get together and play through it as a, as a, a team and just have a great time. So it's just making those connections. It's amazing how much video games bring people together. Well, yeah. look at this, cool. the podcast. Aww. So nice. Let's face it, we wouldn't, all of us wouldn't know each other if we didn't go to Voldemort Towers. Uh, I mean, something did come out of that hot turd. 
Our friendship. Aww. So, as per Aaron, let's have everybody, you know, send us a, a memory of playing games with a, a loved one. Let's hear what you guys used to play. You can put that on Facebook or uh, shoot us an email at factorysealed.manatank.com. Guys, I think that's going to do it for this week. Do we have any final thoughts? Don't get old. Congratulations. Oh, get Quentin. old. It's awesome. What, Tom? Congrats, congratulations to Quinton. Yes. Yeah, Quentin. yeah. Good man. Damn good prize, that. You're going to love it. We will be outlining a new contest here in the coming weeks. We just kind of have to get it put together um, for something from Andrew Thorson. I'll be starting to post some stuff on Facebook. What, Dan? Keep an ear out. Keep an ear out, perhaps an eye peeled. Yes. An eye peeled. Next week, we have to talk about what we're playing next week. Do we have a definitive game? Otherwise, I have a recommendation. Oh, God. What's your recommendation? Uh, something, something Eurasia? Oh. <laughs> Murder Do it. Okay. Eurasia Express. Does anybody have this next week's game selected, or is it still open? I think, so. I think the list is completely fucked at the moment. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the list is fucked. Um... Do we want to do... Has anybody here played Act Razor? I was just reading about this this morning. That's so strange. Uh, Dan, you and I are quite literally the same person. I've, I've got a book <laughs> called A Thousand One Video Games to Play Before You Die, and that is something I read this morning in that book. Oh, that sounds like a good book. Act, Act Razor is... Somebody got me it for Secret Santa last year, Tom, so clearly they know me. That's a great secret Santa present. I know. I was so impressed. <laughs> Usually they suck. You should just use that book and play through everything. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do Act Razor for next week. Tom, where can we find you on Twitter? Oh, that would be at Hyperjelly. Jess. Uh, I'm a Jess. Dan. Uh, Frosted Sloth. You can find me at Honest Pizza, the show at Factory Dash Sealed, underscore. or check us out. Is it underscore? underscore. Yeah, Factory Dash Sealed dot com for the website, uh, or check us out on Facebook, Factory Sealed Retro Gaming Podcast Community, or Patreon as well, of course. Oh yeah, we have new Patreon supporters too. We have uh, a new donation of twenty dollars from Eric Townsend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then somebody else donated two dollars. I really want to get that in here. Who is it? We shall use your money to Game make new Jones contests. Gave us two dollars as well. Check us out factoryseal.com slash Patreon. Guys, that's gonna do it for this week. We'll see you all next week with Act Razor. Razor. Bye bye. Razor. Razor. Act Razor. <laughs> Bye.